What is going on YouTube? I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you're interested in purchasing my book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. It's also available in paperback form. So today I wanted to talk to you about going beyond frugality when you are forced to save. Now here is just a really interesting statistic. Uh, the average savings rate is about 7.2%. But during forced frugality, or during, as an example, our forced lockdown, our savings rate went up to nearly 34%, from 7% to 34%. So you can already tell that those people out there who say, I can't save, um, it's not true. And it has been proven time and time again when they are forced to save and they have no way of spending money. It is really funny how when they have no way of spending money, how that money just happens to accumulate by an extra 25%. 25%, that's one fourth of your income that is being saved when you have no way to spend it. So here's a few things that, um, that are really interesting is that a lot of people romanticize the Great Depression. Now, I do not romanticize it. Yes, it was a time when we came together with great, great patriotism and people helped their neighbor. And um, But a lot of people romanticize the absolute poverty that happened during that time. People did die of starvation. There were no food banks. There were soup kitchens where you had to wait in line for several hours for one bowl of soup. You didn't get to take food home. There were no agricultural subsidies, so people stopped farming um, when their crops were dying during the Dust Bowl. We were short on wheat and meat, and pretty much the only thing that you could get was vegetables, which people could not afford because there was no FDIC insurance on their bank account. So if a bank closed down, they lost their entire life savings and they had no way of getting it back. Can you imagine what life would be like if you went to your bank, all of your bank accounts, all of your savings account, all of your investments, and poof, it was gone and you have no way of getting it back. How much money do you have that you can grab, hold on to, that would be able to get you through? And remember, the Great Depression Depression lasted 10 years. I know with the money that I have on hand, there is absolutely no way I would be able to last 10 years without continue to make, continuing to make an income. But as I digress, uh, a lot of people romanticize the Great Depression, and I'm not doing that, but out of necessity, is creativity and invention. So during the Great Depression, people found free ways to entertain themselves. Now we here in the United States have an average disposable income of $1,600. Disposable income. That does not include your fixed expenses. That is disposable expenses. Now let's talk about fix, fixed expenses really quick and how most expenses are not really fixed. You may think that they're fixed, but they're not fixed expenses. It takes patience, discipline, um, perseverance in order to get these lowered, but it can be done. First of all, debt is the devil. It is simply the devil. It is a bill that you do not need to have. Um, but in order for you not to have that bill, it requires patience. So instead of buying a car uh, with a car loan, a $30,000 car is actually $35,000 $35, if you have a car loan. And that's a low price. A $35,000, $40,000 car is gonna cost you, $35,000 is gonna be $40,000. A $40,000 car is gonna be like $47,000. So the price, the sticker price that you see is not the price that you pay unless you're paying in cash. Um, if you are using a credit card, that is a bill that you don't have to pay. If you don't pay it off monthly and you accumulate interest, you might as well just add 10% onto the purchase price every month that you keep that bill. So if you go and spend $1,000, you're gonna get, um, if you don't pay it off, you're gonna get an $1,100 bill the next month. I mean, it just it, it's a bill that you don't need to have. That is not a fixed expense. Get rid of the debt. That includes mortgages. I hear all these people saying, I'm gonna pay off my mortgage early, but it still takes them 15 years. But if they could just put an extra $20, $30, $100, 
That is coffee money, $100 on their mortgage payment each month. They'll pay it off so much faster. Um, but let's talk about fixed expenses. So um, not including debt. Let's assume that you are debt free and you have no mortgage, no credit cards, student loans, medical debt, car loans, anything like that, you're debt free. So let's talk about, first of all, uh, property taxes. So property taxes, there are certain states where if you are over a certain age, you're elderly or you're disabled, your property taxes do not have to be paid. The state pays for it for you. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to medical care, I do recommend going to healthcare.gov, but make sure that you are checking all of the boxes. So if you have a job, it is more than likely that your job is going to pay the majority of your medical expenses. So if you have a $500 per month medical bill, um, they will pay for 400 and you will pay for $100, which is automatically deducted from your paycheck. That's probably going to be the best deal. If not, and you have a low income, you might qualify for a reduced rate medical expense, not expense, reduced rate medical. So those are the two biggest bills that most people have is their house and medical. <clears throat> After that um, comes transportation. So your car. So did you buy your car new? Did you buy it used? Um, did you buy it really used? For instance, my car, I had a 2015 Corolla and I sold it for more than I paid it for, paid for it at the height of the car prices. That's not going to last forever. We're going to go back to depreciating assets, depreciating car values. That's what's going to happen. I kept my Toyota Camry that has less than 90,000 miles on it uh, that I got for $4,000. It was a garage kept 25 year old car that I guess grandma never drove. So it, it's pretty much like having a brand new car. And people say, where am I supposed to get a car for $4,000? There is a Honda Accord for sale down the street for $2,000. It has 120,000 miles on it. Cars are still available for really, really low prices. And when you do go for a car, don't forget, if you're buying an SUV, a sports car, something that gets 15, 18 miles per gallon, um, you're paying more for something that you're more than likely not going to use for that specific utility. So get an economy car, get a sedan. Sedans are usually have 30 to 35 miles per gallon. Um, and hopefully you're going to be able to save a lot of money just on gas. What comes after housing, medical and transportation? I'm going down the list in my head of my bills from biggest to smallest. So next bill I would say is let's go with electricity. Um, now I have solar, so whatever, but a lot of different companies, electric companies offer reduced rates for low income. Um, they offer reduced rates for non peak hours. So if they, most peak hours are between 4 PM and 9 PM, and you actually get charged more for using electricity, <clears throat> excuse me, during those five hours. So during those five hours, can you unplug your refrigerator and turn off your water heater? Can you wait to do dishes in your dishwasher until after 9 p.m.? Uh, can you maybe turn off a few more lights between those hours? It's, it's when most people come home from work and then they turn on everything in the house and that's why these electricity companies call them peak hours and they charge more for those specific hours. Um, also, you can plug every, everything you've got into an LED strip, turn it off when you go to bed and then you won't have to turn it on until you get home from work the next day. Your modem is going to take five minutes to boot back up. But while you're coming in the house, just flick the switch and go to the bathroom like we always do. You know, spend your couple of minutes in the bathroom, go get yourself a glass of water. And by the time you're halfway done with your glass of water, your modem is going to be back up. So it's not a huge inconvenience. It's five minutes. And believe it or not, that'll probably save about $15 off of your electric bill just by having that one thing done because think about it you're sleeping for eight hours you're probably getting ready for work for an hour you're at work for eight hours and then you take an hour to come home and decompress so that's 18 hours right there 18 out of 24 hours where you are not using electricity or you don't need to use the electricity 
and it's just collecting phantom power. Your modem's gonna be on whether you're home or not. So just think about things like that. The next comes the food bill. So yes, food is necessary, but you have to remember that one out of six people at this point are on food stamps, EBT cards, or people have, they're, they're spending so high based on their income that, and they don't qualify for food stamps, so they have to go to food banks. Now, if you need, if you need assistance, if you need help, there's no shame in doing that. It's actually a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness to get help when you need it, but it should not be used as a crutch. Food stamps are meant to be a supplement to people's food purchasing. It's not meant to pay for all of it. And it's the same with food banks. It is meant to supplement. It is not meant to be your entire food, all of your food. You should be able to afford your own food. And one thing that I see a lot of people do is that is their income increases, so does their expenses. Like no matter what, it seems, and, and I do exactly the opposite. If my income increases, I start selling things like um, be what is it be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful so that's I do the opposite of what everybody else does and it has served me well for over 20 not over almost 20 years but when it comes to food do you need steak or well it used to be, okay, well, I'm going to substitute this tri-tip for London broil. And I'm going to, instead of have lobster, I'm going to have shrimp. Instead of bacon, I'm going to have uh, pork, pork jowl bacon. Uh, instead of, you know, it used to be where I, I was able to reduce, not the quality of meat, but the cut of the meat. So... Certain cuts are more expensive and I would opt to get the lower cost cut as opposed to the higher cost cut. And that's a great way to reduce your meat portion in half. But now it's getting to the point, if I still wanna live on $100 a month for groceries, now I'm substituting hamburger meat for beans. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I spend a lot less on my groceries than the majority of people that I know. Um, and I think that one of the biggest ways that you can save money, no matter what, is learn how to cook. And I'm still learning different ways of cooking that helps me save even more. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a recent example, and, and this is probably common sense to most people, but it was not common sense to me until maybe a couple months ago. So when I cook a chicken, I will cook the chicken and then I'll take the carcass and put it in a crock pot to make my chicken stock. Um, I didn't know. So I didn't know this. I, I must have ran into it on a YouTube video that after you cook the stock for a while, you put a strainer on a pot and then you dump everything from the crock pot into the strainer and let it drip down. And then you take off the you take out the bones and then you put the meat back in with it and then you put it back on the crock pot. I didn't know that that was like a thing. And beyond that, I saw somebody add pasta noodles to the stock. And I was like, mind blown. Because I always thought that chicken soup was just the stock and the meat. I kn and I would add things from my freezer like uh, carrots, onion, celery are things that I keep. Um, I keep the bits and I put them in the freezer for my stock. So I'd add those in, but I never, I seriously never thought to add noodles, um, which is, I'm sure it's common sense for most everybody on here, but I never thought of that. And I did it one time. Oh my gosh. It made it go so much further. It took like seven servings of soup and turned it into nine. And I was like, how did I not do this before? You know, how did I not know this? So that's one thing about the food. So when it comes to um, your like, okay, we went over electricity, then you've got internet. Now, first of all, you need to know what internet speed you need. For high def television, you need a minimum of three megabits per second. The majority of internet companies don't have anything lower than eight megabits but they send their promotions for 12, 50, 100 megabits. 
So you may sign up for that $100 a month service thinking that it's the, the I want the best, I want the fastest. But, you know, if, if you call them and you say, hey, you know, do you have anything slower? Do you have anything slower, slower, slower? Do you have anything you have to ask specifically? Do you have anything unadvertised that is slower speed that's not on your website and not advertised you have to ask it very specifically and i know this because i used to work for comcast which is xfinity and typically they'll say okay yeah we have this slower speed and their slower speed is usually like 25 megabits per second again in order to watch hd you only need three now, if you've got 10 TVs in your house, that's a different issue that I don't want to get into. That's none of my business because I think you have too many TVs. And gaming, if, if you're allowing your teenage son to game and your finances are, or daughter, whatever, and your finances are low, it's time to have a real talk with your kids. Kids are resilient. I wish, I really do wish that as a kid, our finances were not kept from me. I would, I don't even want to get into it, but I wish that my mother was more open and honest about what our expenses were, what the income was, and then I would have been able to help maybe cut back, save different ways. Um, I wish I would have learned how to cook at a much younger age and I could have had food ready for her and all this. I could have helped so much. Knowing what I know now, if I could just go back in time, I could, I could save my mom so much more money. But, uh, you know, have an open and honest conversation with your kids and say, look, we can't afford this internet speed. It might affect your gaming. It might not, but we can't, we can't take the chance anymore. Um, and it is something that a lot of internet companies offer. Another thing you can do is if you have more than one option in your area, start calling around and saying, What's the, I got an offer from so-and-so for this much. What can you offer me? Uh, can you do a slower speed for a lower dollar amount? I'm looking for something cheaper. Another thing that you can do is purchase your own modem. Purchasing your own modem for about a hundred, well, they range anywhere from 50 to $150, but if you can buy one for like $80, you know, most internet companies charge you $10 per month to borrow their modem, which goes out all the time, but, in an eight month period, you will have paid for paid for it. And then anything after that, you're saving $10 a month just by using your own modem. That's a big one. And over, I mean, over 10 years, $10 a month over 10 years, that adds up to thousands of dollars. I mean, it's not just a little tiny bit of money. And uh, those are some of the things for internet, for cell phones. So I always talk about Mint Mobile. I have Mint Mobile. I've had them for about three years now. It is $15 per month. The catch is that you have to pay a year at a time. Uh, mine, and plus taxes, of course, you have to pay taxes. But $15 a month, and I believe it's four, four, megs, four gigs of data, um, but I use my cell phone mostly using Wi-Fi. Uh, I, I set it on the Wi-Fi setting when I come home, Wi-Fi sitting at the library. A lot of public places have Wi-Fi. You go into Starbucks or McDonald's, you can use their Wi-Fi on your phone and you don't have to use your own data. A lot of people don't understand that about cell phones is that you don't have to use your own data. You can use it off of, the, off of anybody's Wi-Fi pretty much. So four gigs for me is plenty. I actually, I, I've never run out of data for my cell phone and that's at the lowest plan. They all also have unlimited plans for $30 um, and they run off of larger networks. So there's always these smaller networks that run off of larger networks. For instance, AT&T is gonna cost you $80 a month, but Cricket Wireless is owned by AT&T and uses the AT&T network and it's $30 a month. Um, if $15 a month is too much for you, the lowest I can find is Boost Mobile Plan with one gigabyte of data. Boost Mobile for $10 a month. And again, if you're just using it to do phone calls and texting, that's all free. Um, and you can use other people's Wi-Fi. So that's a way that I could save an additional $5 per month, but I'm very happy with my Mint Mobile. Um, and the link is in the description. I've never had any problems with uh, dropped calls. Um, bad reception. 
it works anywhere and everywhere I have ever needed it. I can look up YouTube videos. I can listen to music on my walks. No problems whatsoever. No, I don't even get lag time. I don't even get any, any of that little spinny thing. None of that going on with the cell phone. And that's Mint Mobile. So, and don't be afri afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to make these phone calls. Um, it's going to save you money. A lot of people, I have gotten emails from people who say, I did what you said. I saved $300 a month just by making this phone call. I don't know why I didn't do this years ago. Same thing with auto insurance. Okay, auto insurance. Now, I own an old car. It's only a $4,000 car. I barely drive. I do most of my traveling via walking or my electric bicycle, but I have liability only. And a lot of people think that that's irresponsible for some reason. I don't understand, and it depends on where you live, I guess. But liability only is fine for me. I have AAA, and AAA, if you go to those websites and it says, compare us to other auto insurances and it's got Progressive and Allstate and Geico. AAA is never on there because AAA is like half the price of anybody else, except if you live in a state that starts with an M. Minnesota, Mississippi, Michigan, Maine. If you live in a state that starts with an M, AAA is not going to save you any money. I guess they don't like the letter M. But everywhere else, it's like half the price. So call them i'm telling you and it's the same with home insurance call them call triple a i'm not affiliated with them if they have an affiliate i'll look it up and i'll see if i can make some extra money but call triple a and say how much to uh insure my car how much to insure my home blah 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 i bet you you're gonna save at least at least two hundred dollars uh every six months $200 every six months, $200 a year. We'll say $200 a year off of both, depending on what you have. And um, that is a huge thing, make the phone call. Think about it, making a phone call to save 100 bucks a month is worth it. A 15 minutes for $100, that is a good salary right there. It's a really good salary. Um, credit cards, with the interest rate environment that we're living in right now, I don't really think you're going to get a lower interest rate, just pay it off pay off your debt pay it off just you don't want that it's a, it's a bill you don't need uh, what else do we have i can't think of anything else but let's talk about entertainment for a second during the great depression they had dances they had ice cream socials and they had like uh, town picnics where you'd, you'd put a, tie a rope around your leg and your partner's leg and you'd try to race, potato sack races. And those were a lot of fun. I mean, they are, they're a lot of fun. I always talk about any kind of frisbee or ball. You can go and make a kite, uh, stuff like that. You know, board games, horseshoes, cornhole, anything that you can think of that where you buy it one time and you have multiple use. Um, the other things that I talk about are things that are offered to people for free, um, not daily, but often, that most people pay for. Trips to the zoo. Check, just Google. Zoos that are free in my area. Aquariums that are free in my area. Museums that are free in my area. And almost, not almost all, but there are a lot of participating places where they will have once a month, once a quarter, once a season, once a year, a day where people can go for free. So you don't have to, why pay 50, 60 bucks to go to a zoo per person for a family of four, $240, if you can just plan ahead, find out what their free day is and go on the free day. Just do it on the free day. It's You'll save $240, however much it costs. Museums, you know, you've got a $10, I don't know, $15 entry fee. Family of four, you just save $60 by calling ahead, seeing what their free days are, and going on a free day. Going on a free day. Uh, there is free fishing. So if you don't want to pay for a fishing license, which is typically $50 a year, I used to pay for a fishing license. I'm not doing that anymore. Um, I am just simply going to go on free days. Yes, every state with the fish and fishing, fish, fish and game, 
uh, offers usually between two and five times per year free fishing days where you can fish the lakes, streams, creeks, rivers for free. You don't have to go and buy a fishing license or have a daily license or a permit or anything like that. You fish for free. Um, also, if you live on the coast, I know here in California that if you fish off of a pier, you don't have to have any sort of license. Uh, you just have to make sure that the things that you catch are within a certain measurement. And tons of people just check crab fishing. If you live in Maine, free lobster fishing. You know, well, I don't know if you can do it for free, but here, if you do it on a pier, it's free. So you can drop your nets, you can drop your lines, you can drop your crab traps for free. So here in the state of California, technically, I never have to pay for fish if I don't want to. I mean, I'm sure I will, but uh, I would never have to pay for fish or crab, probably lobster. Any fish, crab, lobster, that is a huge, and if you're eating, I don't know, four ounces a day, on those free fishing days, you could stock up until the next free fishing day and you are good to go. Same with the crabs. I love crab. Crab is delicious. I miss crab. But I would never have to pay for that again if I don't want to. And there's also free hunting days from what I understand. So if you want to bag a deer on a certain day, maybe you'll get lucky or a turkey, whatever you, whatever you hunters bag. I've never hunted. I'm not a hunter, but that's a big thing. Really big thing. Um, and that can say, I mean, if you bag a deer or an elk or something, it's like 80 pounds of meat. And if, if you're eating four ounces, <laughs> you're supposed, you're supposed to eat four ounces, but people probably eat a pound a day. But if you were eat, to eat the amount you're supposed to, that is 320 servings of meat from 80 pounds. That's a year's worth of meat. If you ate it almost every day. That's an insane amount. <laughs> That's a really lot of meat. But I just wanted to throw some of those things out there. Uh, let you know that, you know, people, anyone who ever says in the comment section of anybody's videos, um, I can't save because of this. Um, you can, and you have. And people who say, the only reason you're able to do it is because you're single. Well, yeah, but I also don't have a partner with a second income. <laughs> so you've got a partner with a second income. Congratulations, you know, good for you. So you have double the income that I do. It, it just doesn't make sense to say that you can't do something. And I'm not talking just about me, just in general. When people say, I can't do that because, it's because you don't want to. There you go. All right, folks, I hope that this video has been helpful. Please make those phone calls. I am telling you, you are going to save hundreds, if not thousands, if you, if you make those phone calls. And when you do make those phone calls and you do save money, I want you to comment in the comment section of this video and say, I called Mint Mobile and I just saved this much. I called AAA and I just saved this much. I just called my internet provider and I said, holy Jesus, Prepper Princess, you were right. You know, I just saved $300 a month by calling all of these places. I want to know because it, it really, it is a big deal when people listen and then they actually tell me that they listen and then they tell me what they saved. It is like, to me, it's, it's like a, it's an I told you so it, from you guys. That's what it is. <laughs> it's feeding my ego. Feed my ego, people. Tell me you were right, Prepper Princess. And then I can be like, I told you so on future videos. Okay, I'm trying to be funny. I don't know. I hope you guys get my sense of humor. I don't really mean that it's for my ego, but it's really, really great to learn that, you know, a lot of people who didn't know that they could save this money go and make a few phone calls and they do actually save the money. It really is a big deal. And I love hearing about it. And the more you comment about it, uh, the more other people are going to be like, wait, maybe this will work for me too. And then they'll try it and they'll be able to save some money. So, and don't forget, take all that saved money and invest it in something. Um, invest it so that you can make your money grow. All right, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.